a memo here from Greg Burns. Um, he needs a transfer of about 150000 to be sure that he has enough. Um, overtime is trending high due to disabilities, but also I'm sure that fire that we had not too long ago wasn't um, any help on the overtime budget. And so for him to need that much money, and we also need the 25000 for the school custodian, um, that they're doing a buyout of longevity. Um, the combined is 175. You've got 150, which is why we're asking Board of Selectmen to vote on the 25000 But the 25000 we're taking from um, surplus that we have in the health insurance premiums and moving it to the fire overtime and that balance that's there is what's available currently and what will be there if we take the 25000 out. And then the last, the second and the third are actually just regular FinCom transfers. So um, 125, another 125 for fire overtime and then the 25000 um, for custodian longevity buyout. And we don't expect anything else to come in over the transfer in the next two days. Would, would you say? Nothing else should come over the transom between now and the 30th. I well, hope not. I mean, we've analyzed the budget and we kind of have an idea of what's out there. So hopefully not. We do have through July 15th to do transfers. Um, oh. So if something else should come up, we might have to call both. Board. If that, if anything else were to come up, we'd have to call the Board of Selectmen and FinCom together again to do it. Can I answer a question? Can you walk me through? So if we're transferring from the health insurance premiums account, because, because that's, you know, moving it between different lines that we vote on the, that town meeting, we actually need a vote of Board of Selectmen and, and um, FinCom okay. together to do that. Whereas normally what you're moving is money that's already been assigned as FinCom reserve fund transfer money, which you have full right to move all by yourself. Um, but with this, we're actually moving between um, lines that were voted at town meeting. Yeah. So that we don't need to add anything to the FinCom reserve account. We're going to just use all 150 as You're going to use the whole 150, and that would be just normal FinCom transfer. Okay. And then this one here has to be voted by the majority of FinCom and then also by the majority of the Board of Selectmen, and then everyone must sign. Great. Can you walk us through a little bit on the, uh, sure. what's happening here? And, and one of the things I'd like to really ask is how much of this is the because of the reduction of the one firefighter position? How much is outside of that? It's, it's part of it. Um, there's a couple of things. In addition to this memo that happened during the fiscal year, um, we had we're, we're, the department's going through a transition where people are retiring, and um, uh, this this year we had three people retire. One of those positions we did not replace, but um, we started two new people also in, in September and put them through the fire academy. They didn't get out until. until um, so we were, we were kind of vacant positions, and then we were paying them while, we were, while they were in the academy. Um, so part part of the overtime is the result of, of uh, not filling, you know, dropping the department down to one position. And when you have uh, injuries during the same time, that position becomes more acute because it creates a hiring situation more often. Do you think that the um, the injuries here, not by individual but in total, are larger than a typical year, or on par, or less? We've we've trended higher in injuries the last several years. Um, some of them, you know, um, it's it's a drop where you where we do have injuries, and we had um, some some knee injuries. One of them happened off the job, one of them happened on the job. Um, but, it, but it is a job where, where people do get injured. Um, because you're lifting heavy people, you're carrying them down the stairs, and you're working, you know, they're working in the dark. One of these knee injuries happened in, in the dark. And so it's, it's an environment where people do get hurt. If you were to, uh, one, of, one of the things I'd love to understand is I don't think we can be in a position where we think that we've cut a position because of budget issues and then we end up paying it back through overtime and other issues. So that it's, we really couldn't do the cut and the reality came back to us. What's your 
assessment of where we are toward that. When, when, what the town manager did when we did the reduction, he increased the overtime account for the next fiscal year, knowing that that it will result in more overtime. We knew it's going to uh, increase. There's going to be some more overtime spending as a result of that. I can't tell you the exact amount it would be because it depends upon when you have an injury and, and what else is going on in the, in the department. Um, you know, we had of the three retirements, um, one of them I knew way in advance it was going to happen. The other one I had a little bit more than six months' notice, and the other one was, was shorter notice. So it makes it harder to kind of kind of plan. Um, but it, it depends upon, you know, when you have injuries and, and vacancies and things like that. We'll, we'll, we'll be um, hiring two more people. We're, we're in the process of doing that as, as well. So we'll be training th them as well during the next fiscal year. So, you know, probably in all likelihood, I won't get them into the academy until very late fall. And they're replacing the retirees. Yes. Uh, Greg, maybe maybe one way to approach Mark's question is your minimum manning is um, nine per shift? It's, it's ten. Ten. And, um, and full is eleven. A full shift is eleven. So if you go from eleven to ten by virtue of a reduction in retirement, you may not see it immediately because you still have above the minimum. You're at or above minimum, but you have no capacity to suffer another injury, whereas you would at eleven. Right, and where and you end up incurring overtime is when you have an injury, right? And then during vacations or a, or a sickness. You wouldn't need the overtime if you went from 11 to 10, though. You don't. You wouldn't necessarily need it. You might, in your judgment, you might, I assume, right? Or would you always use it? It would result in overtime anytime somebody uh, was. You could, if if you had 11 people on the shift, right? Anytime you had more than one person out. You'd have overtime. You'd have overtime. And we have restrictions. We only allow two people on vacation at, at one one period. So we don't allow everybody to be off at the same time. But, but it, it does result in overtime. And what, what we, you know, what I'd like to be able, what I'd love to see, you know, if the town could financially afford it, is, is to have us with four groups of 12. And that gives it that cushion where two people on vacation were still not in a hiring situation. And, and so it's not as much reliance on the overtime system. This is going to become important in the override discussion because this concept of brittleness is not well understood. They're very brittle when you're at minimum. But yes. you've got resiliency if you're at capacity. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. That, that's, I mean, that's yeah. exactly. If you look at hours lost just on figures two vacation, people, yeah. it's, it's, if you figure 35 hours a week, that's two years worth yep. of, so that's, you, you, could hi, you could hire two full firefighters and not have to pay the overtime and the net effect on the budget is zero. Right. So, right. And, and this so is precisely the discussion we, we have to think yeah. they have and understand what's the what's the manning that is most efficient and allows for unknowns. Not every unknown, but reasonable unknowns. Right. And I I won't quite, what are we doing to mitigate some of the unknowns? Are we are we looking at the safety practices, things like that? Are we are we going and any sort of retraining just because we see the effect financially of injuries, right? It really has a big impact. On these numbers, is there is there anything you're doing just with the high rate of injury, or is it strictly you know one of my thoughts when, as you're going through it and you talked about other times is it just demographics are people sort of older and more prone to injury, anyway. So um, I'm trying to trying to figure that out as well just to see so we're not in a similar position going forward. I've I've looked at that in some when you. When you get into the, the nitty gritty of each each specific one, it's they can be very different. Like um, when the injury that the person was was walking at an emergency scene and he's you know, he stepped uh, in a in a depression that mm -hmm. he didn't see mm -hmm. and he and he yeah, injured the knee. Yeah. But uh, if if you see the time, I should have changed out the, the code. Some of these are sick. Some of these are medical issues. Okay. And there's just okay. no control right, right. over yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, we had a we had a hernia, and it wasn't as a result of lifting something heavy. The person was going through a window when it happened. So I don't know how to train right, you can't, that. No, no, you can't. You can't. No, these are these are yeah. No, right. these are. Un and and um, uh, two of two of the knees were on were on duty. One of the knee wasn't. 
So it's it's kind of hard when you when when you look at them. So sure, it's yeah. something I do want to look at and see, but it's um, sometimes it's, there, it's it's you've got a heavy person in the bathroom that yeah. you've got to move. There's no there's no real way to move that person, so that results in an injury. That was one of the one of the knee injuries. Mm -hmm. a, a heavy elderly patient was on the floor. He was picking that person up. He didn't have a lot of room to maneuver, and it, it twisted his knee. And right. mm -hmm. you know they, they would tried the physical therapy route that didn't work and and then it was surgery. Yeah, so it sounds unavoidable. Yeah, I'd love to have like you know think like this back training and then that would drop this. Sure. Thing, yeah, yeah. You know, fifty percent. I'd love to see something like that, but yep. the, when I when I look at them individually, I don't see it. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I uh, just had a question on the definition of IOD. Uh, uh, injured on duty. Okay. Comment and then a, a question. I think uh, the problem that you're one of the things that we're seeing here is not just the injuries, but when a firefighter is injured, I guess. You, can't go to, you can't go to work like I can because of the nature of like, the job. So you're sort of hit with a double whammy. Um, one question that says three reti retirements and the reduction of one firefighter position. Does that mean that of the three? Of the three retired, does it, or the three people who retired, you're replacing two of them, or we're hoping to replace two of them. We had three during this fiscal year. We're replacing two of them, okay. and I have another planned retirement coming in in, uh, in November. So we'll go through the process as we as we're hiring for the last one that just happened in May. Yeah. Um, we're going to um, we're going to select another person as well. Right. Because because of the lead time and everything, they yeah. won't come on until. We're still down by one. Yeah. Still down. We're still. Right now, we're still. We're we're still down by two. Uh, just a quick one. I'm trying to remember and compare where we've been in the past. So certainly not looking for a a specific answer because there's too many unknowns. But where we're potentially down two firefighters, right? If we if we were to normalize higher. Uh, those two more or potentially even higher three more right we're never going to see the overtime number come to zero because i assume there's some component of just managing shifts that that plays into that right so it's not as simple as well we're short so theoretically if we hired we'd eliminate overtime you're always going to have some component of that that's correct if if we were at you know add two more or maybe the number is three but to get to that call it fully staffed perfect in your mind what is a reasonable range for overtime to, overtime. to run if, if we were up, up in the in with four groups of 12 like yep. I mentioned um, probably around 300,000 okay that's just a wild guess but how many hours is that great 300k what does that represent in hours it's it, um, the average um, rate is $55 an hour so Six hundred hours. Six thousand hours. Six thousand. And it's not just for uh, it's not the overtime is not just for shift staffing. It's we also um, use it for paramedic training. We we have been sending paramedics out to to train uh, for their recertification. They have to do it every two years. They have a certain number of hours. So part of that is, is into it. We're going to be bringing that in house next um, next next round which will happen uh, in, the, in the fall but we still have to train them when they're off duty you can't do it while they're on the ambulance because they're running out to calls not to oh, oh, sorry. Um, so this is going to be what was voted tonight is a stop get measure that gets us to next week starting on July 1st right is this this run rate is going to continue? I know you have two firefighters, but they're not starting until August, right? So we'll we'll start a, a firefighter in, in August, but we'll be paying him. He'll be in the academy. We'll still have a vacancy. So so this run rate is going to pull up a hole next week. Is, is going to start? It's it's not going to start to come down until um, two two firefighters return to duty. One of them I know is going to be back in September, in the beginning of September, and. Um, one that had knee surgery, I'm not exactly sure when he's coming back. 
Um, I th so it, those two positions, when they come back, that's going to slow the run rate down. The firefighter that we hired, we won't see him back from the academy until um, uh, late October, and then we still have to do so an that's in-house training. whole quarter. Yeah. Correct. Right. Correct. In the summertime is a is the overtime period for vacations. us because of vacation. Um, well, I was actually just picking up when you were talking about bringing some of the training in, in internally. Right. So if you did do that, that doesn't give you some flexibility to do that while they're on their shift, some of that training during downtime? Um, you, can do, you can do some, and we do, do, we do a lot of EMS uh, stuff, but when it comes to the refresher, they're very strict on how it gets administered. You have to file with OEMS. It's, it's, it's first Office of Emergency Medical Services. Mm -hmm. You have to have, run that class between the hours that they say. They can't be running out to calls and be gone for an hour or so. They have to be in their seats when they're supposed to be. Um, we do uh, con ed, continuing education, while they're on duty. Not all of it is done on an overtime basis, mm -hmm. only the refresher portion of it. I see. Um, we just had our continuing ed training um, uh, this, this week with, with the on-duty crew and while, while they were working. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're always wrestling with what's the right um, number of FTEs with right, right amount of tempo and so forth. Um, I wonder if we could see for the last five years, you know, salary, overtime, transfers, because we end up doing fair number of transfers. the fire department only? And, yeah, and then FTEs that correspond to that. Could we just keep going? the same discussion yeah. I feel like and I don't think we make progress as well because it's an important topic to understand mm -hmm. to yeah and similar are. challenge they down also it's going to be a big look at dispatch while you're at it although yeah, it's not I agree <laughs> dispatch as well please I think it would be helpful just to understand where it's been trending and, and you know, very, very great. We, you, I know you're prepared now um, coming into each time it's like okay we went through the analysis of overtime and what would happen if we had one or two people and what would it look like um, and I think it's an, it's an annual analysis that has to take place. Right. 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 We talked about it at one of the meetings this year, um, that when you hire someone, is it a quarter or is it six months that you basically don't get anything out of them before you get? It's at least a, a, a quarter of the year um, because the academy is a two-week, it's a ten-week program. Yep. And then uh, when they come back, it's a two-week in-house training program. And then then I can feel comfortable counting them as part of shift strength. When they come right out of the academy, they, they, they still don't know our equipment and, and how they fit into the whole operation. So they need a couple of weeks to get orientated and up to speed on our Jeez. equipment. And then I count them. But then the training continues. Um, and, and it's about another three months of, of training. We have specific things on operating the equipment and, and learning the community, you know, where the elderly housing is and, and all of those things. So. The, the training continues, but it's as they're working and as they're counted as part of the shift strength. So it is three, six months of yes coming off that curve. And yeah, closer to productive. six. Yeah, closer to six where you where we're paying them, but we're not really getting the, the benefit of filling that gap. I just wanted to um, ask a question. Sure. Okay. So the one hundred forty-one thousand is the cost of the overtime salaries that were paid to cover the four thousand and ninety-six. It's it's to, to close the gap in, in um, the deficit in the department, and the the sick and injuries are one of the driving factors of mm -hmm. the need for the additional overtime. Okay, so that's not the only piece, but you obviously you paid the salary for those four thousand ninety six hours. Yes. For, right. Yep. That was all pretty much paid time, and then the one forty one is both the overtime that was needed to cover mm -hmm. that plus these other. And I, I, I know it, it's, it's even more, right? So there's a budget for overtime to cover this kind of stuff. This is a transfer on top of that. Oh, right. I, I guess, Brett, I'm trying to figure out how much overtime the 4,096 sick hours cost, but that's not this number. That's because of the reason. Right, this is short. This is what the shortfall is in the overtime account. I, I, I put this graph in just so FinCon could see um, some, of the, some of the real heavy cost items. 
what you know what the durations were, what the hours were. Just to see if that's one of the driving factors. And can I just clarify one other? So the um, four groups of three, the four groups of twelve, and you. Um, Call it the round. I know the round number, three hundred thousand. So that works out on the on a crew of forty eight to um, one hundred and thirteen hours per person, which would be about three weeks of overtime a year. Is that so? Is that probably? That, that's just a just that's like an off the cuff. Okay. Yes, I, I I don't have anything to back that. Uh, just kind of giving them a an order of magnitude that I think would be reduced. Just trying to understand it. Yeah, I wish I, I wish I could, you know, but I don't know when the injuries are going to happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you have four injuries in a year, if they all happen at once, it's going to result in more overtime. Oh, they're spread out. Less. If, they're, if they happen spread out during periods where there's not as much um, vacation periods, then, then the impact is less. But if they happen all in the summer, all at the same time, mm -hmm. it's a heavier cost. And then you factor in... Uh, retirements to cause other um, vacancies, and, mm -hmm. and then you, you're paying for the more overtime as a result. But would you, if you had the four groups of 12, right, would you be able to, you would, I think John's term was resilient, you would be able to be, you know, maybe say, well, we can run this shift with one group at 11, or would you always be like saying, I need to put somebody on on overtime to have my 12? No, you, we would drop to what the minimum is, and um, you know, if you had a group where two people were injured on, you'd do a transfer mm -hmm. to 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 make that group uh, go from from nine back uh, from ten to eleven. Mm -hmm. So you'd have two groups of eleven. Right. You know, try to fill that. But if you have if if we had four groups at twelve, then we're not sometimes we wouldn't be paying for training that we normally would be paying for now. And we wouldn't be um, in paying for some of the injuries where we would be now. Right, you wouldn't be paying overtime, you're paying a straight time would, salary. We wouldn't be hitting that minimum. We wouldn't be dropping below the minimum. Thank you. Thank well, you, Mark. Uh, no, actually, you've been covered. Yep, we're okay. Sorry, Eric. Uh, just picking up on Mr. Arena's term of brittleness, right? Um, so when a firefighter does put in overtime, what, what kind of restrictions are there on that just from a, a safety perspective, right? Can they, two shifts in a row or how many shifts in a week? Or, or, or you know, what, at what point can they do no more overtime, right? What's uh, the Yeah, we have a certain number of hours that they can't go beyond. Right. And uh, they need a rest period of a full shift once they hit that. And it's, it's 56 hours that once they hit that, they can't go any further than that. 56 hours in a week, they can't go beyond that. Yep. So the example you just used with Ms. Webb, then that's concluding their regular shift. Right. So if right. they work 24, uh, 24 hours on, 24 hours off, they can't work a 24 hour shift between their 24 hours. Right. Because that would put them over. So, how close are you to a situation, say, you know, four injuries at once or something like that, like, <coughs> like you just said, where <coughs> those restrictions, you don't have anybody to do the overtime, you know what I mean? And then what happens in that situation? I don't know how close you. Okay. What, what, what kind of gap there is to well, that type of situation, and what would happen if that happened? You know what I mean? Uh, what we do is if, if we can't get somebody to, to come in, we force somebody. To, somebody doesn't go home. We force somebody to stay. And if they've worked too many hours, then they're not eligible to be required to stay. In, unless they were the only officer <coughs> working, then they would, they would be required to stay. But... Um, <coughs> That's one of the things we look at when we require somebody to stay. And it, it puts a burden on them, you know, and I, that's your question. I know that's the, kind of the root of your question, yeah. and it's concerning. Yeah, you don't want people working too, too much because they're prone to getting hurt or hurting somebody else. So we, we do put restrictions on that, and um, so it's, it's a concern. Just to amplify um, Greg's point, if you look at the um, fiscal 18 budget, um, in 16, we, our actual numbers in overtime were over half a million, 530K. The actuals for, six, for 17 were dropped, so we took some risk. Think of it as we took risk on the overtime number and we got caught. If we'd had that incremental 170K, you could have covered it potentially. You'd be right at the limit, but you could have covered it. 
So in some sense, we took risk against the number, and we had a more active year than likely. In another year, this might have been just fine. But I think what you're talking about is you got to get closer to the run rate of half a million in overtime, which covers the 6,000 hours you talked about, plus the uncertain injury time. And that's what the problem here is. We cut this to try to make the 17 budget, and it's a risk item. It's, it may never happen. Surprise, it did happen this year. It almost looks like we would have known it would yeah. happen. Look at the look action. at the numbers. Yeah, look at the chart. And this is the discussion yeah. we had last budget cycle. I'm concerned about the overtime. But, yeah, but when you when you're down a when you're down a position, it's that much worse. That's then then you know that that overtime is going right. to be higher. But I'm, and that's what we're headed for. Right. But we weren't right. down a position during those years. No, but we're, oh, and, yeah. actuals 14, 15, 16. Um, those are dollars. So you'd have to look at FTEs to know if you were down. Gets back to for for. Um, Employees. I'm. I'm just looking at the overtime spend, which. Yeah. Well, that's what I think of right now, right? Yeah, so, so this guy here. Overtime. Yeah. Right. Looks so, like they're running. But I don't know if we were full-time staff manning back in 16 and 15. I don't. In other words, were we putting as much pressure on the overtime budget back in 15 and 16? I have to go back and look at the budget. Sorry, what am I looking at though? The columns actual is 14, 15. So I think that, that's what yeah. we actually spent that year. Yeah. So for example, we actually spent a half a million at 14. 574k, 530k. This year, the operating, we dropped our, our actual uh, spend. Where was the budget number? Well, it's actuals. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's at 390. The actuals as of a certain date. The actuals as of. That's not meeting. closed out yet. Town meeting. Yeah, yeah, right. right. That was well, actual at the time. To bring yeah. it right back up to the correct. same actuals. Correct. So it's a false economy to have chopped it down. Right. It feels like right. snow and ice to me. Um, yep. It's exactly probably less volatile, but yeah, yeah it's got yeah. that feel. Like. Probably but we're stuck in the same spot with snow and ice. I mean, we can't quickly get another firefighter, right? We just went through the discussion of six months. I mean, there is only one answer here tonight, and that's to prove it and move on. Right. It's more but, a discussion of how do we plan for next year? How do we and, plan and it's for hard next year? Going into, but you can't do it. It does us no good to not budget. Right. Realistic. Yeah, exactly. Salary, yep. And snow and ice is way more volatile. I get that. And we also never want to not have so much that we can't get stated, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. if you look at the actuals, right. I so this, I think discuss is a case. this at the budget time. Exactly. If you're cutting into core services and you're cutting deeper than you can, and we pay for it in overtime, and we pay a premium because we do it in overtime. So the budget looks like it's balanced, but it's really not because we're just going to throw in history that tells us where we're going to Right. Especially when we see the this detail, when we see salaries, FTEs, and overtime. <coughs> and we we're we're financing out of free cash. Yep. Yep. And it's not like we can just service. cut back on the overtime. We have minimum manning, so you have right. to have that. Right. Yeah. Other comments, questions? Is there any way to fix this moving forward now, or is it just too late? Six months back up. Yeah, yeah let's please. Do the, this is done. Until we go into the <laughs> even if we even if we put two we'll firefighters into the budget starting Saturday, it would be six months before, you get before we would even you know get any service. So I mean, no matter what we do, we're going to be six months behind. Yeah. Just let me argue the other side for a moment. There's nothing wrong with budgeting it at 360, which we did. We just took risk. We covered the risk with mitigating from the reserves. We're covered. It's fine. This would have worked five out of six years. We just got caught this year. It's, you just can't do it every year. You're going to get caught on a regular basis. Yeah. I, I think the change, though, is actually we're, we're taking the water level down in fiscal 18's mm -hmm. budget. It'll we're come down even more, right? Right. So now, you know, it's you don't look. know what will happen exactly, but you've lowered, you've lowered the buffer, you've lowered the water level. So now any, any bounce is going to be felt in overtime. It's kind so of like snow and ice, like you said, though, because yeah. it, you have to pay it, and, and, and it's one of those things that you use reserves for. Right, but it's... Is we're sitting here planning the use of reserves. Yeah. This is we're kidding ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that really is not okay. And it's a good thing you didn't have anybody, so nice. anything yeah. else uh, yeah. tugging at the FinCom reserves during the yep. year. Right. Otherwise, the transfer would have been much larger. True. Yeah, if, there was, if you had some, some other uh, requests for FinCom transfers during the year. Yeah. Right. All right. We have one, two chances at the town meeting to come back. Or actually, one chance. Yeah. But again, we're, we're saying that we, we missed something. We can't always predict it, but by lowering the water level, the likelihood of it happening goes up. Sorry, John. The only other issue is I have my virtual town manager on text right now, and, and the comment is that OT by itself can be dangerous. 
because you may budget for it and it doesn't happen, and therefore you could have put those dollars elsewhere in the operating budget. Mm -hmm. So there is a assessment that needs to be done here with the right staffing against all the other Absolutely. priorities. So, yeah. That's always, that's every year. Uh, what I would suggest then is let's um, let John talk a little bit about custodial, uh, custodial longevity buyout. So we can kind of all three of these. So just to go a little bit back in history, November of 2015 town meeting approved the, um, the movement of the facilities department minus the school custodians to the town core. But they have still been under the same collective bargaining agreement, which has been under the school committee through their three-year um, span of the collective bargaining agreement. That's expiring on June 30th. So in order to prepare for that transition, uh, Bob and I have been uh, working together uh, to negotiate the collective bargaining agreement for both units. Uh, um, and then as of July 1st, there'll be two separate collective bargaining units, one for school custodians, um, one for facilities and town custodians. Um, one, of the, one of the things that, that was done several, several years ago in all of the collective bargaining agreements in the, the school contracts is that there was a sunset clause on longevity. Um, I believe any employee hired after 1995 would no longer be eligible for longevity. So we'd still have some employees in all of our collective bargaining units that, that receive longevity each year. Um, but that's, longevity. longevity is for the amount of years that you work, you get a certain amount of money. Um, so, and it depends on the bargaining unit. So if you work 20 years, you get an extra $1,000. If you work 25 years, maybe you get $1,500. I, I don't know the numbers. But part of your salary, or this, or are we talking about retirement? No, no, it's a separate amount of money you get annually. OK. Above and beyond your, your, sal your base salary. Bonus. But it doesn't go towards retirement. It can't, it can't count towards retirement. Um, when, when Bob and I were talking about the, this particular situation with the custodians, one of the things that um, we were trying to do was reduce the financial liability of moving forward of longevity for the custodians and the um, maintenance in, in, in town custodians. So um, as part of the collective bargaining negotiations, uh, one of the things that we've been able to do is, is eliminate longevity moving forward, which requires a buyout. But that buyout needs to come out of FY17. Um, so what, we, um, what we're asking for this evening is uh, 25000 I believe it's $25,000. And that $25,000 is for the school portion of the longevity buyout. For all the school custodians, I believe there's, um, there's five is five uh, on the uh, the school side that is still eligible eligible for longevity. So essentially, what this does is it eliminates longevity moving forward in both the school contract for custodians and the town maintenance and town custodian contract. We did not obviously have this budgeted um, when we were developing the FY17 budget. So why aren't we transferring for the town? No, I. The no, this is just has enough money within their budget. Oh, um, I see. They don't. They don't have okay. a need for it. They've got a little bit of a surplus. And and it is possible that when we close out the fiscal year, I mean we're still we're ending we're getting close to the end of the fiscal year that this may come right back to free cash, um, that we may have this amount go back. But right now we're not sure, so that's why we're. And the discussion of a buyout was something that kind of came up late in the year to, to make it. Yes. Time. We didn't start negotiating a lot of our contracts <coughs> until uh, after the budget process had been right. completed. Right after April. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then buyout, as in, this is the last time this should come up. There should be no more. Long yeah. Th there is no more longevity in either of these contracts moving forward. Uh, questions. None of those people were grandfathered, or, or or anybody who was grandfathered is no longer here. Or that's who we're paying. That's that's what that's what this is. These are these are, so these these are people are retired. This is just the no no no. These are people that are currently will be working 
in the in the system next they were year. Hired before 1995. Yes. And this is just taken care of. Okay, understood. Any employee hired after 1995 no longer is eligible for longevity. These are all employees that are still working um, and are continuing to get it. So this is a financial liability that we're now removing from future budgets. Understood. So is this a? Are they paid to lump sum? They will get a lump sum. There was a formula that we used. Um, to come up with the number based on their age, mm -hmm. and I believe it was to go up to 66. 66, or 66. Yeah, which is we have several custodians that are actually in that age range. What's the benefit of doing the buyout as opposed to continuing to do it until they retire? Presumably, they it's an amount of money each year that's going to be on your operating budget that now will get removed. But otherwise, there's no difference in, from a cost perspective. It's just a discounted, so you basically, the longer you go out, you discount it now. So if you were right. to continue to Time pay value over money. X number right. of years, you would actually pay out more than you're paying out now. Right. So you're basically. But it's just time value of money. It's the yeah. same dollars, just pushed forward. So you discounted it to the present day. Okay. Yes. Right. You're assuming they were talking about the same expense. We're just taking care of it as a one timer as opposed to annual. So, oh, go ahead. so this, in essence, is. They're losing a benefit, and we're buying them, buying them out of that benefit. Correct. Mm -hmm. well, they're getting the benefit. Do we have other contracts with longevity? All of our contracts have sunset clauses for longevity. Oh, okay. Okay. So we still have employees that receive longevity in other bargaining units. A lot of them. Yes. Well, it depends on the bargaining unit. So, for example, teachers, there are still several people that are in the oh, system. So that's in, your, that's in the basic teacher agreement, longevity. Yeah, all the collective bargaining agreements have longevity, but they, they all have sunset clauses. And it's pretty much the 1995. Mm -hmm. Are we trying to buy out all of them? Or just was this one just... This off? was not a large amount of money. Some of the other ones would be a significant amount of money. Well, the, I was just going to say the vote should read 25, not 125, right? Uh, mm. This is, yeah, this is 25. That page three? It's the third oh, page. Yeah, it's the third page. Down below. Oh, yeah. so yeah. Down, yeah. The bottom, yeah. down at the bottom. Down yeah. at the bottom. Which is Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 25 up here, but. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's our vote. That's our vote. Yeah. Thank you. Page? <laughs> Six. <clears throat> Questions, comments? Well, twenty five versus twenty five. Um, it's right up there in the down. First would be the transfer. make that motion for the board. Uh, we're on page three, and I'll need a fresh sig signature page for page four if you have an extra copy, Brandon. Got to pass that around to the board here. Do we have to sign yeah, it we do. Oh, yeah, we do. Okay, move that the Board of Selectmen authorize the transfer in the amount of $25,000 from health insurance premiums account 191455574-574000 to the account uh, one two two zero three five one one dash five one five zero 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 fire overtime shortfall due to disabilities, which is an unforeseen or extraordinary expense. Second. Uh, I have a motion. I have a second for the discussion. So I was just trying to understand this account, the health insurance premium account. What do you want to know about? I'm not sure. I'm Question. Yeah, so like why there? What, yeah, what, what is this yeah. account? Well, health insurance has a surplus, so we just chose where there was money that we could actually move to this. You know, so health insurance had $96,000 left after we paid June's payment, and so it was a good spot to take it from. No real reason except that oh. they had the money. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So normally this would have just been closed out to free cash. It would cash. have just closed to free cash. 
So there's nothing untoward about taking from this account and put it in that account. That kind of just, kind of trace it. just a shortcut rather than taking it from free yeah. cash. Yeah, yeah. You could take it from free cash and this would just wash to it in two days anyway. It's 61 half a dozen. You can't take it from free cash. You can't take it from free cash because you don't have the right to take it from free cash. That's correct. It's ultimately what we're going to do. Right. Just so I can explain to people if they ask me. The only other way to have done this would have been to do it at town meeting. Where we don't have an upcoming town meeting, this is the uh, option that right. we have. Okay. So there's a procedure in place to do it this way. Yeah. That's that's what mm -hmm. we're doing. Mm -hmm. so where do the funds in this account come from? This ninety-six thousand. Where do the funds come from? The operating budget. So we we have a line when we're approving the budget each year for benefits, and in that is health insurance, life insurance, retirement assessment, all the benefits that. that we our employees are in that line item. OPED, that's where the OPED money would be. So just make sure I'm understanding to it that the end of the year, after all the bills are paid, we go through and we scrub all the accounts and see what actually was spent. And mm -hmm. anything that um, is left over goes to free cash. Pops goes right into free cash. So this would have closed to free cash. I mean, because we've already paid for our June premium payment. Um, this account that I selected is our health insurance premium. So what we would have paid to Maya was already paid in June. So we knew that there wasn't anything else coming out of this account. So it was a safe spot to take it, and there was money there to take it. I think the question is, why is it so large? It's just that it underran. The expense just underran from what we forecast. Why is it so large? I think there's always a little buffer in the benefits line, just because we don't know what enrollment is going to be. I see. You got a buffer for that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion on the board? All those in favor? Four zero. Okay. To fill C right circle in. that. Uh, put four zero. Sign here. Four zero zero. No, no, no. no. We don't do that. Uh, improper. Really? Yeah, it you is. have to sign that. Feels right. It's all the same. Yeah, that's uh, But it has to be separate votes because it has to be a majority. Uh, no, no, no. no, no. Separately. At least that's the way DOR explained it to me. It's the first time I've seen this done. Chairman one. <laughs> I think it got done once before I got here, but. I'll bring it over. Andy, Andy, what are you doing? I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, <laughs> you're not an actor. I'm not a cripple. She wants to demonstrate that somebody was dead. I can hop. I've gotten this. And uh, you can pass that down. Thank you for a nice story. <laughs> I do need the pen, though. Okay, pen comp side. So we're going to take our vote on this as well. So, um, so I'm put a motion forward. Motion to approve as outlined. Give it down to Shim. Okay, you need a second? Second. Second, any further discussion? Not appearing. All those in favor? Opposed? Just hope. Seven zero zero. Hancock. So this has space for everyone to sign. Is that the plan? Well, DOR said because this is a board of selectmen in FinCom, they sometimes will question the vote to make sure that you mm -hmm. had a majority this, of both. Yep. You have to use the money yeah. yeah. the yeah. official <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Check there, I can't, so you can't abstain. Or normally it's just your vote. Uh, yeah. right. the they want to make sure you that you need to count how many happen. you had for, you know, like that you have a majority of board selectmen. So it's just because they don't have enough information. Robert says just don't record them. But where you need a majority, you've got to record it. Where you, have, where you need a majority, you need to record it. Well, that's done separately. <coughs> oh, thanks, I'm good. Oh, does it go around with the pen? Know. All right, I'll, I'll take the pen then if that's that was Emma. Uh, I'm just going to stick around for the budget. Did it have to be all black? Yeah. 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 So oh, did he? All right. I don't do that. No, no, yeah. I think it's done. I can pass it either way. Sorry. That goes back out to Sharon. I guess so. Pin travels. <laughs> we'll find out, Eric. Let's see. Are you guys all staying? Let's see. I'm going to stay. Is that all in good order? Check out. I'm going to check out. So, FinCom, let's look at the request for 125000 I don't know if this is a little bit of a motion. Moved. <coughs> <laughs> Second. Okay, any 
further discussion? Not appearing. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion to approve as amended. And a second. Second. Vanessa, any discussion? No. All those in favor? Opposed? 2700. Yeah, I think you mentioned John should sign that one. John, can I ask you to sign that one? Would you mind? Next to uh, Bob's signature. He's got a sign. Go to the draft budget schedule, which is on page seven. So the core of the discussion here was because we are in agreement that there are some uh, core issues in terms of uh, kind of how to operate the town and the operating budget and discussions about an override, it was a great advantage to speeding up the process by at least a month. So the board of selectmen, I believe, put together this. Uh, suggested schedule of when things would take place. Um, we have kind of a, a September and October financial forum in here, October 11th, the budget guidance. So we'll take Sharon's uh, input on where we think revenues are going to be, mm -hmm. talk about the use of reserves, and then give guidance to town and schools for that kind of uh, base budget. And then um, from there, uh, in fact, John, why can I? ask you to kind of chime in as the process you're thinking from there in terms of where. Well, you said it earlier, Mark. We're trying to back this up by about a month. So normally FinCom's activity would start in February when you'd have, you see the series of meetings there. Our, our thought is if the town side can um, back this up two to four weeks, get our work done by before we break for the uh, Christmas break, the schools have to go into January. You know, I think John, you said the middle of January, the end of January. I can't remember where you. Yeah, Jan January 18th is when the school committee will take a vote on you know, the budget. Maybe as the year plays out, that improves slightly. Who knows? It's six months away. But our goal is to try to accelerate this. So if Fincom could take what would normally be four weeks of work and by double time meetings, do it in three or two, we'd have a, all the data available in the public's hands that much sooner to try to deal with questions and objections. Um, we fully discussed this at our last meeting, and there are you know, a number of issues that require us to um, make sure that we have you know, as accurate information as we can. And this is, we don't see that this is, there's going to be improvement in this. This is an improvement, and we see this as the timeline. So in terms of, and, and we'll, we'll be developing the baseline budget and an enhanced budget, mm -hmm. which would be targeted for the, over, you know, if there is an override. Now, that's, if, if the selectmen, and my understanding, um, I was not at the meetings with the um, past school committee chair and the current chair, that if this is the, we want that override information to come through our fully vetted and highly detailed and rigorous budget process, then this is the timeline. If there's some other desire on your part to put together just an, an override number, then I think that is something that we could look at. But even, even at what we're looking at now, we really need to get to January 8th to be able to see those budgets. But if you if you were our understanding from those meetings was that the any number relative to the override that you were looking for needed to have all of the, the backing and the detail of the budget and that's what we're going to get to through this process. And the priorities list, your, your, your punch it, list for right. priorities. Yes. Not a punch list, but it, a priority list of the things that we would feel we need to put back in based on the, what, what we then come to as the structural deficit and what we see as critical needs for the schools to support the district mission. 
for the next two to three years right. possibly. So all I'm saying too is we, we, this is a process, we don't feel like there is any additional movement in terms of this budget process. If we wanted to talk about an override number that does not have all of these details behind it somewhat earlier in the time frame, perhaps that could be in the December time frame. But the committee would have to talk about that specifically. We haven't. We talked about it in the context of this process and came to the conclusion and agreement that we supported the two-week improvement that we see here. Okay, I understand. I'd be I'd be reluctant to try to do anything but have the detail. To try to run with a, a number without any justification, I think is not wise. Really? So I, it does seem like, and again, you guys are more familiar with your specific budget process, but it seems like we should be able to come up with the structural deficit number. Pretty quickly. Pretty right. quickly. I agree. And that's the baseline budget. That's the baseline budget. Right. Yeah. And so it would be nice if we could use, you know, mid-fall at the end of year to sort of work through some of that because we all know it's going to be a negotiation and back and forth what pe people have the appetite for, how big a priority are these maybe additional putbacks or it would be really nice to be able to have some of those discussions late fall. Is that realistic to have a structural deficit number or no? I don't, I don't, based on what we talked about and we also have an added problem of the DSEs changing all of the um, chart of accounts. Yeah, see that's so, what I don't, like it seems just high level it's not without going back to all the DESIs and cost centers and everything else. Well, we have to build it up from the bottom and, and realign everything. So that, that's one piece of it. I think the revolving accounts, we have to make sure that we you know, understand any impacts that we have based on um, fees, closing out those accounts, the payroll numbers, the SPED, the accommodated costs. Um, we, and in terms of even getting a good idea of where we are on the solid on the incoming class and the enrollments. So I, I, I think on January 8th is when I think the committee is going to be able to see the level of detail and accuracy on the, the structural deficit from uh, last year. Well, I think not before then, really, structural the, deficit. The, the further away from the fiscal year that you develop a budget, the less reliable are your numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's our biggest concern, <clears throat> that we don't want to put out a number and then say, oh, we actually meant this number. Mm -hmm because we would have to be very conservative if it's further out when we start developing it. I don't Right, I understand. Mm -hmm. But just I worry about the runway because I I really would like to have some of that and I hope it would be a cooperative meeting to sort of massage that number to figure out what the appetite is for the public. I think the concern I was at the school committee meeting where they discussed this and I think part of the concern is that by doing it further in advance there's a certain amount of vagueness. And, it, and, that, yeah. and that didn't work out so well for us last time around. Um, and so it wasn't, people didn't really get motivated until they saw what it was actually affecting. Um, my question, given um, the heavy ask that we're, we're putting on the schools here, is once the schools have their final budget on January 18th, how soon after that? Will the Board of Selectmen plan on voting? Um, because presumably the, the town manager has already said he's given how his numbers work out, it, his, his budget is completed sooner. Correct. Um, your FinCom then gets it, right? So it really comes down to. Well, my question is though that FinCom doesn't necessarily need to vote on the budget in order to understand, in order for, the, for any individual boards or uh, um, the grassroots groups to start moving forward with understanding it. Right. I think the other problem here is this school vacations. Is there school vacation in this gap between? Yeah, uh, in February. We've got the 21st. Yeah. So uh, we've got to factor that in. But our thought would be if, if the 18th is the date or the 19th is the date, FinCom could take that up as quickly after that. Time will be done at least three or four weeks before, ahead of that anyway. Well, my question is, does FinCom need to vote on the final budget? Because even if we were to pull this up, the numbers at that point aren't going to change. We ha we'll have the school committee numbers. You know, so we'll have that list of what's going to be affected by each of the two versions of the budget. 
So it takes FinCom out of the process, then, right. doesn't it? Yeah. Well, Just well, Rob, I mean, well, the FinCom will still need to go through this process, but for an oh, for the board to vote on an override number. That, that's fine, but then anything that you if you make any change out of that, it's done. Right. Yeah. The right. Cake is baked at that we point. We have to give our recommendation and our review, so we can't skip that step in the process. What you could do, well, though, except is you but what we're yeah, voting we at that have point no would part. be a no override budget. That's what we'd be two voting. Two, so to me, the discussion two. is in parallel of, yes, yeah, of the be. budget. Actually, no, you're right. Because right. it's, it's not. You can't, you can't vote on a budget on, on on money that the town hasn't allocated. Exactly. So, so well, it's a parallel just, discussion, to mm -hmm. my thinking. Also, FinCom doesn't necessarily. While we've discussed the override, FinCom doesn't <clears throat> vote on the override no. number. No, so that's right. You, you, you can right. prepare but a budget with and without. Yeah, well, what I mean is, in order for the board to vote, we don't know. One budget. We're, we're voting one budget that's going to. But I, I, uh, the board of selectmen can just vote on the on the extra needed by the schools in the town. As soon as this t as soon as the school committee votes, we can then we sh if we get our ducks in a row beforehand, we should be able to turn around and vote on an override amount uh, in 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 January, and that gives us the runway time. Not that FinCom's not important, they are. It's just that for purposes of the override, I'm not sure if FinCom, we need a vote by the FinCom. Does FinCom that make sense? FinCom doesn't vote on an override number, though. I would like to be, I think it's appropriate for us to be well, part well, of the absolute, discussions, but it's, it's not, yes. this time frame is related to a right. different budget. It's right. not the override. I, I agree, which is why it'd be great after the school committee asks, asks when they're ready, if then the board of selectmen could meld the, you know, the school committee what they need, and the town manager says he needs to to, to come up with an override number. Just make one comment. The, the, there are a couple of, of um, strong needs that we have. One of the concerns that I've heard from a number of people is that if March seventh is kind of the start of discussions of an override number trying to explain to the people exactly what that is before potentially April 3rd is really a very short period of time. That's shorter than what we had last time. Yeah. yeah. And, and probably doesn't allow us to do our best job here. So I think that's the back end pressure. Now the question is, okay, what, what can be done to move it up? Certainly moving things up by a month is a, is a dramatic benefit. Um, but I, I, I wonder about the Nessus idea also. Is, um, is there a way to be thinking about um, what the guidance is going to be for an override amount. And just to, to close on, the other thing that, that gets interesting is let's assume that there is a process that we go through, there is a request, there's an election, and it, the override is approved. Town meeting follows three weeks, not quite three weeks after that. And they'd have to have, I assume at that point, a budget that includes the override amount, correct? I think you might have two That's budgets. That's why we're That's developing we two see. budgets. A budget without the override and a budget with. Well, basically, we what it is, it just amendments to put line items right, back into right, the right. existing. It's actually one budget. budget and a set of an amendment, as Barry yeah. said. Yeah. Which, okay. yeah. but I think doing one without the other, the optics of that are weird. I agree. And I think you need them almost at the same time to explain to folks this is the baseline case, this right. is what missed doesn't make it, it wasn't funded, and I in both town and schools, this is the list of amendments that would add some or all of those back, whatever happens to be, then you've got the whole picture. Doing one without the other is... Yes, do right. both. Right. If the override yeah. goes through, we have right. to vote the override budget. Right. Well, you vote the budget with the amendments. But that's after... Which that's is the override. Still, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Still still the election. Election. That's what goes... Te yeah, technically, the your, your FinCom manual, I looked at it, you can prepare dual budgets if you want to be formal about it, or you can yeah, do it that way. I, I don't you know how... But the question on the table really is, do we need um, an official FinCom vote State thing to, to come up with a an override vote at the Board of Selectmen um, on after we get uh, the school committee budget on so the Mark, 19th. I, think yeah, I just want to say that on January 8th, the school committee will, res will receive the superintendent's recommendation, which will include that it will they'll have that enhanced budget, which reflects the override. So in terms of Dialogue, and I realize the school committee will have to consider. That's they have to, we have to work through that to make that the school committee member. But I would say that 
there could be certainly some dialogue during that month, potentially, as a good idea, Elaine. If we got together and tried to work through that preliminary version, that's directionally correct. I'm sure there'll be changes, but it's right. But we can start that in early January, and and to then to your point, who would put you know you you in a position, us in a position, and you to take a vote on it, and you know even potentially like on the 19th before the 19th, depending right. upon how we are school committee and board second are feeling about that dialogue and that number. Yeah, I mean if we see the direction that you guys are going in, we'll be, and we understand right. your budget. Then we can react all the all the faster. That also would give FinCom the opportunity to look at both budgets. You might even we might actually all jointly meet at those first few meetings and try to get yeah, as much mileage out of the financial forum. We're in an unusual circumstance, so I think we need to do an unusual response this year. So having us all in in the boat together is probably the right thing to do. So if that's the case, we can even close the warren earlier. I mean, well, that, that would give us a position to start talking about it at, you know, as early as the end of January, which, right. which yeah. is what we were hoping to do. And I think January, th do we have a meeting January 31st? I know, because I did sort of know what happened to that last week of January, you know, in terms of... Yeah. yeah. Do you have a calendar? Yep. So I just think it's important that we do it. Certainly Feb by Feb on February 13th. And, and in collaboration. Yeah. And, but if we do that, then I think FinCom needs to supply the refreshments Actually, for the meeting. Could I? <laughs> I make good brownies. This is true. Yeah. I, I think it was a Tuesday. 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 <laughs> Tuesday is a 2, 9, 16, 20. <laughs> 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 we have the fish. Yeah, we yeah, think really do. We don't close the warrant, but we could at least vote on that. So it sounds And then officially, you know, kind of vote on it. Yeah, we'll accept like close the warrant. Yeah, think of the part you close. The warrant closes here. So it sounds like we're in agreement that. Right, but we could vote on it before the warrant closes. FinCom what? should be well, attending not. these January school committee meetings so that the numbers are universally understood. You might. And then with that, FinCom will continue its process in February, uh, and the Board of Selectmen will vote on an override number when? This the 20th. Two weeks at the <laughs> January, that, right? The 19th is the, uh, the 18th is a Friday. Thursday. If the week of the 22nd. We could do it on the 30th or the 13th. Presumably. The, the, the 23rd or the 30th? 16th. So the, the 23rd is the Tuesday. Oh, February. Do you have a meeting on the 23rd or do you have a meeting on the No, Saturday? I'm talking in January. Right. Right, that's, yeah. that's what I mean with the. the so Friday the 19th, is the Tuesday the 23rd. So yeah. the 23rd, yeah. do you have a meeting on the 30th? So. Just in order to add it to this calendar. Yeah. So we'll be asking uh, Sharon and Bob to work very diligently to come up with balanced budget, mm -hmm. um, which hopefully oh. won't, won't be too far out of whack anyway, mm -hmm. so that instead of kind of looking at kind of that FinCom budget of Feb 5, um, there's a lot right. of activity going on prior to that, a week or two prior. Yeah. So we'll make we'll make up pay in January. I guess the question in February is, is it make sense to try to um, accelerate the FinCom process as well? Can we do it February 7th? Well, we can't do... Um, well, yeah, we could. Uh, the FinCom ones can't be moved up too much because we need that override number. Could you do two a week? Could you do a Tuesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, or Monday, Thursday? We don't vote that, so we don't need it. We can't. Yeah, that, I think. Don't vote the override. You're just looking at the base budget. I think well, they have an easy job, John. Well, I wouldn't so that far. No. If there can be a lot of activity in the latter part of January in particular, and that kind of allows us to have a second budget as a function of the override amount. The ad, the ad backs. Yeah. The ad backs. I, I, I would really be careful calling we'll call it, it a second budget. budget. It's not a second it's budget. It's an addendum. Okay. So it's an addendum to the budget. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the the addendums that add up to a number which would be suggested as an override number. Right. The prioritized list that supports the school and town's combined ask for the override dollars. And the way you would present, or whoever the chair of FinCom is at the time, would present at a town meeting is that... You always do. Is the ba is, here it is. It's in your budget book. Yeah. And then right. there's, you know, proposing amendments as line item by line item as you right. go through it. And, right. and technically... Right. And there's color that's written. To, that's, you know. I understand that. But I think for the, the pitching it to the community, it's easier to say a budget plus. Right, we were just going to be enhanced budget, but whatever. It's not going to be a full budget book. It's going right. to be those right. things that we're 
for storing. That's fine. Right. It's a spreadsheet. For storing it's a and yeah. Yeah. Right. Because the budget book strikes fear into the hearts of budget. Yeah. 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 The budget book does. Yeah. Yes. So we so, thought it would be possible at that point to then look at the weeks of um, the week that has a Wednesday, Feb 7th, and a Wednesday, Feb 14th. Yeah, because. For FinCom to consider it's trying to do some double sessions. So like that would be good. It would be good to try to still. Um, Avoid as much as possible school vacation week if you can. Okay, well, plus if we can get things happening weeks of sooner, school vacation sooner, sooner, then that allows for more time. February twenty first. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the discussion, the, uh, the key discussion. Yeah, I'm sorry. The discussion I'm thinking okay. about it is more the presentation to the community. Of so we can before the twenty first. Yeah. Got it. So can we go back to the the board of selectmen and? <clears throat> what do after the school committee submits a budget to the town manager? What do we need after that to vote on an override? Other than the obviously we'll have a lot of information before that, but what needs to be done by? What other information do we need after that? I think one issue is will our budget be balanced or not? Last year you were out, you submitted an unbalanced budget to the school committee. Yeah, it was a no gimmick unbalanced it was budget. Unbalanced, so, so that had a problem out of the gate, which we solved. But right. this year, I don't think we could do that. It, any right. any imbalance anything would show up in right. the anything that's the ad backs. Any, well, right. I, 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 exactly. So we're we, going to have we're going to have the opportunity to right. say. This, this is what the cut is, but here's the right. view of the world and avoiding that cut. So it'll be a balanced budget. Right. But is yeah. there something in the town we need from the town? Does the town manager the town need manager. To, to to blend them together, and does that take him Bob, a bit of time? Bob's responsible for the yes. total town. So big, big T budget. budget. Right, exactly. So will we need to see that big T from him before so. we that, can vote? That's your baseline budget, and then right. your addbacks for town and schools are on top of it. I think that's what he's allotting for, for at the end of the year. So it does he's take that long. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. But if the yeah. school yeah. committee... Yeah. That's his time to kind of put it together. Yeah. If the school committee has, submits a balanced budget February that's 5th. being discussed in early January that is within FinCom budget now. guidance, Yeah. And the town manager presumably will do the exact same thing. Then the town manager has a balanced budget, so there's no there, which we will know about. Which you would you would know about simply by attending those January eighth through eighteenth. Town the, the town manager has to submit will, will be submitting a balanced budget to FinCom on February fifth. Correct. So presumably, any time after February fifth, the selectmen Could. can can then vote. We have it down here as the twenty seventh. That's mm -hmm. sort of the latest date, but that's. An extra th that buys an extra somewhere, an extra three weeks. And I think there's of, an extra of, week in there as well. Time. You can buy back if you wanted to. But, so, I, but right, again, because I they're, they're finishing up on the 18th. Exactly. Right. Right. But, but, hang on but one the second. Board of Selectmen doesn't need FinCom's Agreed. final review. Right. Yeah. They'll already know what the sort of uh, uh, restoration items are going to be on both the school. I, and would, I would like your input on the baseline budget. If it's only going to take another week, it's. Or, for you to take a look at the baseline or two weeks yeah, if we want double time. Right. It'd be, it'd be so worth what, what FitCom could do is, and we, we did this last year, but maybe we do it a bit more formally, is we post and try to attend essentially all of the budget meetings as they're taking place at Selectman. Yeah. Essentially, they're joint meetings, right? Yeah. Then, you know, can have some discussions. I think we asked Bob if he can find a way to, to beat February 5th. I know it's already a month early, but if he can beat that date. Mm -hmm. That would be great. At the same time, we'll have all kind of talked through all the same information. We can look at a, a baseline and addendums. Um, and then that well, we can can't look at addendums until we have a number from the Board of Selectmen. The addendums aren't. So that's the next piece. You're not worried about the, addend the add backs. That's only in the override. You're only looking at the baseline budget. All right, so I don't but know. If can't we maintain this, this schedule Why? for the budget? It yeah. should be and have the, the separate override. discussion on the override, like have a financial form in the middle there. I don't, we can keep these dates, that's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The whole override discussion is a separate discussion. I think it would be appropriate because we will know the numbers. Will, will um, all the work be done to you know, put them together? No. So I respect these dates, but we can still talk about a number, to my thinking. Right. Before that, an override number. Correct. Right. And we, and we can two. vote a number right. up before the 27th of February where the warrant officially yeah. closes. Well, could, what, could, well, John, I were saying, what couldn't the um, income meet in? You could actually be meeting in January because starting after you'd already, all the towns, 
has already been presented. And then on the 8th, basically, you have the um, all the school budget has recommended from the superintendent. So either, you know, attending the meetings as, as your meetings, potentially, or even to be able to schedule a dialogue, among, you know, for FinCom in January, that could be done sort of in the middle of January, not needing to, to wait, you know, and then, like you suggested, you get, you know, two meetings or whatever you need in the early weeks of February. I think on a discussion basis that works, but I think in terms of final votes, that's not possible. Uh, right. But, um, but uh, certainly, but you, you, you in theory could do your votes after you receive the town manager's budget, but you could have your discussion meetings prior to receiving the town exactly. manager's budget because right. assuming that the budget is balanced, which right. I think it will be because right. the second budget is the one that would be the additions, then you could start your discussions before you receive the town manager's budget. Right. Yes, and then if there are any the, changes made, we can. Yeah, because you have those. all the pieces fundamentally through the process. Right, and if it turns out that we're able to attend most of the Selectman School Committee meetings as an ensemble. The, ne the necessity of the presentations by the board. Right, I was going to bring that up. It, it, right, it's not going to be too presentations. Yeah. I think we still need to stay with, we need to make sure we're clear enough with the meetings that we have so we can cut them down. We can cover more in each meeting because we need to go through the question and answer because this will all fall apart at the end. If, if essentially we don't recruit more people to come out and vote, if those people are going to pay attention, they're going to want to see this year more than anything, the collective effort that goes in, did everyone in this room right now look under every rock? And if we shorten this process too much to try to get to, hey, we wanted to get a number out to you guys, and they actually pay attention and listen to us, they're gonna turn around and look at what we did. And so this more than any year becomes important that, yeah, let's, Let's get it done as quickly as we can. I think the real time savings is not having to see the presentation and you guys not having to give them multiple Two times. times. But we can't cut too much out of this schedule or optically it's going to look like we just tried to jump to an answer to get an override yeah, on there. Clear answer. Paul, you just gave me an idea. This may be a silly thought, but this is a, a different year. And it might be that these meetings in January we structure differently, not just to be the not to take any uh, thing away from the school committee, but during those meetings, if we were all in joint session, you could imagine that if they were covered differently by RCT TV, or there were sections where FinCom could speak at a particular topic, so it's interdigitated as opposed to the school committee meeting ends and then FinCom starts, that actually be a pretty effective way to get the conversation into yeah. the public. I, I would caution: we use all of that. Time. I know that, so, so we'd have to do it selectively. Right, and, and in terms of and the school committee getting through the details of the budget. I think we've, we've always, and our meetings went very long, yep. because we always accepted input from anyone who's in the room, Mark, Paula, and that's a whole bunch of the people who attended the meetings. So I warned you it was maybe it was a bad idea, but um, if we could use some of those meetings as a vehicle to broadcast what we're thinking and not just as deliberative, I think to Paul's point, that might gets replayed on RCTV, people can see it, they can see the thinking. We're not, they're not seeing that in March, they're seeing it in January as it's kind of being made. Well, we should be, you know, taking the same strategy potentially in December too, I mean, and, and I think Mark We'll be saying, doing that. We'll right, be doing to that. have yeah. the members. Plus you guys are moving your public hearing up to the beginning of the process, not the end of the process. So there's a, ample time for people to come in and really talk mm -hmm. about what they think is important that needs to get put in, and, and, and th that's a potentially a meeting where the three groups can be together and hear what the public has to say. Oh, yeah. yeah. Usually you do that at the end. Just to follow Paul's point for a second also, I think um, it's great to move things um, into joint meetings. I think that that's key to eliminate some of the dual presentations, kind of a separate presentation of income. I think that can save a lot of time also. I think one of the things that was strong in the process and we want to encourage this time is more public feedback, a little bit outside of the pressure cooker. So the pressure cooker is going to be these, these early meetings. And at some point, there are going to be some numbers and people are going to start hearing about them. It'd be great to have the opportunity for people to hear, hear it, talk about it. And I don't know if FinCom becomes the forum for that or all the meetings become the forum for that. But I think one of the lessons I learned from the last one is people wanted to ask questions and, and talk. Not enough, but people did want to do that. And that may be some, one of the things that we want to kind of make sure of and not kind of cut everything out of the process. Just yeah. say, hey, we, we, we can do this whole thing in a couple of weeks. It's a $100 million budget. You can't do that that quickly. You just can't. It's not fair. 
What if we were to add in that, your financial forum idea in that last week of January? So if the school committee meetings right. wrap up on the 18th, that following week, what is that, whatever the Monday, Thursday, Thursday are, yeah. the 22nd and the, um, so that we've all, we would have all attended those sessions, we all understand what the numbers are, we're then essentially dedicating every Monday and Thursday in the month of January, um, but then t town residents could come in that last week of January and ask all of us questions, right. because one of the th things that got mentioned at the town meeting was, um, by one of the members, you know, we breezed through the budget in the presentation and FinCom barely made a comment. We said, well, actually, FinCom has been attending these meetings since December. So we were very comfortable with the numbers by the time they were presented to town meeting, but people don't always see that. We sort of sit back. We, aren't, we don't always have a quorum and aren't always called to order. Um, but that last week of January might alleviate that. We're, we're all there and there's no debate, there's no question as to the fact that Everybody's in agreement with them. Yeah, I, my only my only fear is if you think about how long all these meetings are, and we're adding a bunch of sort of administrative formality to them by combining everything together, they're going to be that much longer, and then you lose your audience. I, I don't want to spread it out significantly, but I'm wondering if slowing it down by a week or two might actually help the communication issue. Versus, you see what I'm saying? Are we going too fast? I, I really feel that way. I feel like we can't get through a meeting now. It gets late and people walk out the door, right? I mean, think about it, 9, 9.30, everyone's out, right? They got, they're going home, they, they got jobs the next day. So I, I just a little more space. I feel like we're, we can think of 100 ideas to compress, but are we, are we shooting ourselves in the foot by compressing too much? I'm not saying add a month, but a week or two, maybe. Well, could you what if? Go ahead. Question, just just throwing out a very radical idea for a minute, just, just to kind of see what's going on. What if we, rather than, you know, did two week nights, we did a week night and a weekend day for some of these meetings? Oh, did I make a funny noise? I think you got you. Okay, I'll say it. I can't make it. Uh, yeah, I'll say that's <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure. I, I, fire him. I hear Paul and Mark's uh, concerned about uh, doing this too fast. Um, the only reason you, you may be hearing some uh, pushback from me is because I talked to the, the grassroots people and they really have said that uh, if they can't start till February with a solid number, yep. they're going to be hard pressed to get the message out to the community, which is why I was sort of lobbying for January. And my understanding of the override is very basic. But that it is a combination, the override amount is a combination of X, the extra municipal spending that we need, and Y, the extra school spending we need. Just the sum of those two extended out in a couple of years. We'll have that math um, on the 19th. I mean, we, we, I mean, yes, the town manager is going to have to put them together and do what he does. But we will have the added asks, the X and the Y, to add up mm -hmm. and then maybe discuss at the following week in January with the public because the public wants, if the public doesn't feel heard, they won't, they're not going to get behind it. But if they have, uh, we have a couple weeks that following week after the 19th to meet with the public and listen to their input and have a hearing, then maybe the, the, the week after that, the last week in January, the Board of Selectmen can have the math and the feedback to vote on a number. But they're not making the assumption that the grassroots groups are going to be doing the, the greatest majority of the communication. I mean, I think that's what you're assuming in that. Because, and I feel like we have to do that first yes. and foremost yeah. and we're not going to do a good job of that if we but a lot of it's going to continue that's that's what all this is great communication we continue to have these great meetings Stuff that, yeah, it doesn't happen in a vacuum it's i think yeah. what we're all trying to get to is when can we vote a number can't that be done end of january begin it could be done on january 31st it's just a selectman's meeting date okay there's a um Andy's got a good point. If we did a financial form at the end of January, once the schools have wrapped it up, and FinCom signs up to do twice nightly, 
during the week. You know, Monday, Wednesday, twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> right, <but> sorry. <laughs> um, that part of it can go in parallel, I bet. Now that, that's a vast improvement, but it doesn't get you back to the beginning of the year. But to Paula's point, I think a lot of this is going to be directionally correct. We're going to be able to use a lot of the work that's come out of this as being approximately correct to set expectations. It's not going to be correct to three decimal points, but I don't think it has to be. I also have, one of the things I think we've struggled with is how we communicate with residents. And we have all these meetings that go until 11 o'clock at night, and to Mark's point, we absolutely lose people. Um, what if we took a different approach, which is we have it highlights, you know, sure everything is technically posted to the website and available for those that can find it and dig through these massive packets, but I think what a lot of people want is that highlight reel. They want to know what was discussed, they want a handful of bullet points, just boiled down to whatever those top numbers are, the top issues, the top cuts, um, and if we can have that posted to the town website, that might also contribute to this communication issue that we're having. And it would lead in nicely to that week, the 23rd, where we could have that listening session of the financial forum, if we want to call it that. And then the Board of Selectmen meets on the 31st. Yeah, people can use those highlights to come with questions that week. Yes. Yeah, I'm wondering if also, we, and Mark, to, to your point about who's doing what, maybe in February and March, those could be additional public forums or we could offer public forums in that time frame? Yeah. Or they show up. Or the, you know, the selectmen in the school committee go on a road show and they go to all the PTOs and they go to the senior center and they go to, uh, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's... Use that time. So As a financial forum, right, the same people are coming. Yeah. It always, we're going we're gonna to reach the <laughs> same audience we always <laughs> reach. <laughs> people <laughs> organize neighborhood coffees and, you that, know, four selectmen go out to right, four coffees. That. I think that last yeah. going into... Yeah, I agree. That's... I, I think... Going to people where they're meeting already, you know, yes. PTO meetings are right there, yeah. Meetings. yeah, or asking if we can participate, <laughs> <laughs> asking for an invitation to their. I, I just wanted to um, follow up so Vanessa's idea. So for the school committee, right, we we have the budget book, which is extensive, and Dr. Darty prepares the powerpoints, which are a higher level, and you you know there's the possibility that we can create on the spot, right, like a one-page budget bulletin mm -hmm. that after, after each, each yeah. session mm -hmm. and so you know that that can help and 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 have that posted on the website and sent out so just to again keep people aware and it's a good tool for any organizations that are working you know on the old web. And people well, will read that exactly mm -hmm. well and as one page. If, if it's one, one page, page yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, I agree. It's one yeah. page. Yeah. I, we did get the down to I'm just going to say it was two pages that we had last time in October. This was it, right? We had we had a two page summary. It was no. nine pages of We're talking about We're halfway there. I know. We're <laughs> 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 talking about microfilm. Yeah. Wait, yeah. This, yeah. Is the whole <laughs> thing. this would be the equivalent of four school communities worth of meetings. So we can we can make it more bullets and one page. Yeah. yeah. Remember at the end of the day the voters can do it in one line. Yes, they can. <laughs> <laughs> this is so green. It's one letter. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so do we want to try to summarize this? I think we should. <laughs> um, so what we're talking about is during December and the early parts of January um, to try to have more of a kind of some joint sorts of meetings. Um, and from the FinCom perspective, I get FinCom members will post and try to get everyone to come to those meetings. And the purpose of that is to decrease the requirement for the departments to present again to FinCom, which is a lot of what the activity is right now in February. Um, I think it probably still makes sense to have them available for questions and answers for anything that hasn't yet been resolved. Mm -hmm. But the need for presentation, taking the presentation away should cut that down drastically. I think um, Vanessa and then Andy also talked about the um, insertion of a financial forum in those last two weeks of January, January. Yes. the week after the school committee finishes up, and potentially then Barry commented that potentially the selectmen could be invited to take a vote on the following week. So I think that's a, a really good addition to the process that obviously Bob would have to also buy into. So that's then January 23rd for a uh, yeah. financial forum and January 31st for the Board of Selectmen. Or 29th. 
That's a Thursday night, right? The thir what's the 31st? The 31st. The 31st. Yeah, that's the what's, that, what's that last Tuesday? 29th, I think, is the Tuesday. Uh, 30th. 29th. And yeah, 22nd and 29th are the Mondays. The Board of Selectmen generally meet on Tuesdays? Tuesdays. Oh, yeah, 21st. the 30th? 30th. <laughs> it is January would be 31st. 31st or Wednesday? No. Right. Yes, it is. Yeah. So we're talking the 29th and the 30th? Or the meetings Board of Selectmen be, meeting no. would be the 30th? Why wouldn't we do it the week of the 22nd? I think you should, we should have the financial forum that yes. of the week that week, right? The 20, we do the 22nd. Right, so it would be later in the week, the Wednesday or the Thursday. Right. I'm not sure what our schedule is, but just stay away from uh, Tuesday. Which year are you um, looking yeah. at? January 30th is a Tuesday in January. So maybe there's a financial forum on the Wednesday, Wednesday, the 24th. Yeah. Right. Oh, so, okay. oh, so it is the 30th. Then. All right, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then the Board of Selectmen on the 30th. Yeah. Yes. My eyes drop down a little. And assuming okay. that's the case, then there, you, you, you've got 64 days. Yeah. That's appropriate. Should be that's, that's about as good as I think we're going to be able to get. I don't think we're going to stop anymore. Yeah, and I think, Barry, your sure. idea of, of different types of, of forums for discussion is a great one, too. But, uh, at that point, this clear. Oh, don't forget that war closure also depends on war articles. Yeah, right. Right. So this yeah. stuff is other pieces of paper. Right. You're just right. talking about the number, yeah. right? But yeah. we can do that and then just formally put it on there. You know, but uh, at least it gets out. All there. right, that's. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I guess it's not official, official, but. Mm -hmm. yeah. But a lot of times we put on articles ahead ahead of time oh. before we close a war. Wow. So what I think we should do is. Um, Ask Brendan if you can kind of summarize, and we want to create a new calendar mm. to kind of circulate and review, let everybody make sure that it's kind of corresponds to what we're talking about, mm -hmm. and then try to reserve those dates in our calendars. Yes, Mark, I'm going to revise your February schedule a little bit. You know, like, um, two meetings a week, sort of in the earlier weeks. Um, I, I don't know if we have to, though. I, I, I agree. I don't think we want to make it look so oh, okay. rushed because they can act as great reinforcement to the number now being out. So I don't, yeah. oh, there's no reason to right. be. Right, they'll, they'll be able to be more focused on discussion, though, yeah. based on other yeah. article process. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And there are four meetings here, the three in February and, and then a vote for March. And I think one of the reasons for having the three meetings in February was um, because of the presentation. Yeah, I think so. Now what you mentioned. Yeah. If we're cutting that out, I mean, certainly one of those dates can probably we could do weekly meetings in February, skipping over school vacation week for people to ask questions. Yeah. So the titles on these would need to change so yeah. it's not yeah. a budget so meeting, it's an it open budget discussion. Mm -hmm. yes, we, yeah, right. put them all in and then we can figure out which ones we want to use and things are progressing well, we can decide to. Um, what about what happens in March then? Are we still, so we're still voting on March 7th? So at that point, if I'm understanding things correctly, you'd wind that back to like the 15th? Yeah. 15th of? Fe February, or the 14th. So if we have, if the core budget plus the proposed addendums are in place, I think we're in a position to do that. Mm -hmm. I think we should still continue to have the weekly meetings or perhaps just two meetings in March, though, for listening and discussion sessions for residents. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think that, that, let's use those dates. Maybe the 7th and the 21st of March. Because right now we don't have, the, this March 7th is the last meeting, but if we want to keep it the open dialogue for residents, I would suggest adding the 21st or something that third week. So when do you think the vote week should take place? Is that in February or is that that first March meeting? I said we can vote in February. Although, hmm. I'm torn. Do we want to vote after we've... We're not voting, again, we're not voting on the override, so... No, but this is just the budget. Right, the budget. right, but I'm saying that the amendments, potential amendments to the budget, so if we vote earlier, I don't see why. You know what I mean? just want to get it done and finalized so people we take any uncertainty out of it as soon as we can I think allowing at least a few weeks of, of discussion and public meetings is a really good idea 
Oh yeah, I'm not saying take them out. I'm saying the vote. Yeah. Bring to surface them, kind of pre, as opposed to the data complete and it's done. Some of this we're not going to be able to plan to the to the Nat's whisker. We're going to have to figure this out when we get closer. Just how it's feeling. I think we just let this sit in place. I mean, this is this is conceptually fine. We but let's not lock it. Meeting dates. We don't need to decide which one we're going to vote on. Exactly. Yeah, we've got meetings there. We'll use them as we need them. Also, we can we can throw in an extra meeting too if we have to. Correct. That's the only option. Why don't we consider adding February seventh as a date just to put onto the calendar? So basically, that has us every Wednesday in February. So five and seven. So five is Bob submission. Sorry, what else would be put on? You're going to get that a week or earlier than that, I believe. Right, right. That's our goal. So then you have a the meeting then on the fifth. No, there's a, he's looking at his Wednesdays. Uh, yeah, seven. sorry, I was looking at Wednesdays. Just to add. Okay. So the, the seventh is not on there. We have the 14, 21, 28. Why don't we put the seventh on the calendar for now? Oh, that's week of the fifth. Closer, we'll okay. decide which ones <clears throat> should have which agendas. Selectman, I mean, you're comfortable with the discussion about, you know, doing fin financial form and then trying to vote a number oh, yeah. January 30th. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's a good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just and just one thing, real quick. Aside from all of this, uh, so on, on the on the selectman level, we're developing a survey to go out into the community probably sometime beginning in the probably in the summer. It sort of just takes people's appetite, tries to understand how folks voted before, what's important to them this time going forward which I think will feed back vital information to us as well as, and, and we'll figure out a way to release that information just so that we can get a sense of, you know, taking the temperature of the community. So that's a, a separate thing, not really a budget dry, you know, driver or schedule, but something that the selectmen felt were important to um, kind of understand what happened last time, but more importantly to sort of understand where folks are thinking about now, now that they've seen a full year of cuts. So um, form to be determined, delivery mechanism to be determined, but it is on the selectment agenda. So that'll be useful information for all of us to use. So, so. are the questions going to be relative to, I mean, it's going to be relative to general, everything. or relative to schools? I mean, I, I everything. Maybe everything. you've already talked I think, to the I think it's everything. I think it could be um, anything. So, so. It will be schools, we miss. Yeah. And we'll and share it with the school committee. Looking, so. Okay, I was wondering, yeah. input if it's good. Yeah. I think we want to make sure that we don't. The last thing we want to do is not ask questions and you know um, and cause the uh, survey to um, you know have people develop a more negative perception. So I just want to make sure that we right. are looking hard at that. Understanding, take, understanding where the baseline where the community is right now is just a critical piece to this on the selectman's right. point of view. You're so you know we're not going to generate anything that's going to create divisiveness in the town. Rest assured of that. So we just need information. So that's going to be a separate thing that the selectmen are taking care of. Okay, but I, I just would like to say, okay. I'm, I'm like, are we going to review it? I mean, You'd like some input into it. Yes, well, you'll have input. Right. You can ask questions in a way that might yes. not be. And I just not okay. feudal power. I'm going to right. do a survey. It's a selectman yeah. survey. Just. Okay, so 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 should the school committee be doing their own survey, or are we? I, I would probably think that that's not that a really good should. idea, but no. I would suggest it be one one uh, one authority doing surveys, not multiple, because it's it's confusing where the information's going. Our primary focus is on. We're, we're doing you, we're doing this. We're, we're designing the right. form of the question. The yeah. questions potentially from this. We talked about a survey two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Yeah. And it's very simple. It's what what was your mindset a year ago? What's your mindset today? Very simply, and and if you have reservations in the, what general area do they lie? Just so we can gauge folks, you know. And, and what's your appetite? If I may, yeah. I, I think um, it might be helpful. I attended the meeting where yep. you discussed yep. a couple of issues that I raised from a thing common perspective um, regarding sort of how certain questions were phrased, mm -hmm. um, only because I thought it might be confusing to residents based on my understanding. Sure. Um, I could see where the school committee might be able to provide helpful insight, <coughs> um, that they might be aware of certain sensitive <coughs> issues regarding the schools um, that may not be as widely known. Um, so I would see where the school committee might be able to provide. Yeah, I mean, the advantage of, uh, let's be clear, it was a selectman idea. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Let me finish. Let me finish. I, I, think, I, think, I think a, a, joint, a joint school committee board of selectmen survey <laughs> would be more powerful. So if people saw this was a survey from your school committee and your board of selectmen, um, it would it be more 
that itself would be a more unifying. And, uh, the I'm chairs and the co-chairs will get together as we have. We have there a, we have a, we have a, a sort of schedule of meetings that we're going to do. And we're going to put this, so we're not going to discuss it now. But the point of the discussion is, is that we want to take the temperature of the community in a way that gives us information so that all the stuff that we just spent the last two hours doing, you know, we have a baseline of information. And we want to ask questions, the answers to which we're going to act on. Curiosity isn't a reason to ask a question. We really want the answer, the questions we're asking are going to determine in part what we do next. So it goes to tolerance, it goes to objections, it goes to um, mindset. And it, it helps govern what we're going to do. It might be curious to ask other things, but if we're not going to act on the data, why bother asking the question? Could I ask a question? Sure. On that? Are you looking for quantifiable results out of the survey, or is it a, is it kind of open text? Tell me what you no, think. A little bit of both. both. Well, it's mostly multiple choice. You can make you can choose more than one answer. For instance, every one of the multiple choices has another because that's probably the most interesting place is the text answers. Right? Somebody's going to spend the time and give you a, right. a sentence or two. Yeah. Uh, so to Dan's point, they're all multiple choice, but then there's another. If we didn't right, guess what you thought, right. yep. tell us. If you did, if you voted no, why? And we list reasons. You can choose more than one. So you'd be able to quantify some of this, yeah. and, then, and yeah. then the rest is. But I think it's probably more back. sub. It's more. Um, it's not numeric. It's more. Where was your mindset before? Where's your mindset now? If it changed, why did it change? And it's also short enough to get done in five right. minutes. It's like a that. survey monkey. It's not, we're not, we're not That's what it'll be done with. Seven, seven to ten questions, absolute max. Yep. It's got to be pretty short. Does it ask for priorities? What people's priorities are? We no, haven't so. figured that piece out yet, no. It seems and, hard and, for and us to recommend before we yeah, have and, 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 and Yeah, we thought about that, but I, no. That no. would right, right. have to be open-ended, probably. Right. But it does say, what, you know, what's your tolerance for <coughs> last year? You know, what would be your tolerance for um, an override of the following amount in terms of your tax bill annually? And just get a gradation of where people's right. head is at. <coughs> kind of the way we did the clicker thing at town meeting. Remember that, where we a did a... Years ago. Yeah, I do. And, and I didn't think it was helpful. Um, I think it's out of context. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I don't think people... At the end of the day, they vote on that, but that's not how they're setting their priorities necessarily. And that's why we're doing this early, not to set their priorities, but just to sense what the baseline is. Then all this other work we do has to amplify what we've learned. Okay, if this was what the feedback was, what are the priorities? Get those out quickly. This is not to sense where we are, but where we're starting from. I think that's a great reason to include the school committee as well. I agree. I don't think there's any yeah. debate. Right. Yeah, the chairs will speak for us. Okay. So, Brendan, we do have definitely an action that we can do. It's a nice calendar from what you heard, and then we should review and make sure that all the things are in there. That's, yeah, I uh, that's where we were. have a couple dates added, and then I'll just <coughs> on that by I you guys, too. Yeah. Okay. I have one other question. The fabulous one pager with the bullets that we're looking forward to from the school committee that result from the January meeting, will we have something similar? From the town side? Yes. By the end of December, you'll have it. Here, right. so. By the end of December. And it might not even be a full page. Right. <laughs> Actually, weren't we talking sort of a, each night coming up with yeah. the bulletin version of that meeting? Right. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. Someone, yeah. Of each Someone meeting. Someone going not to necessarily that one. town manager since he's, I don't know who, is our town manager liaison? <laughs> is he? Can make sure he knows. Yeah. 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 Brendan and I. Since we're sort of assigning him work. <laughs> presence. Very sensitive to that. No, I think we're in, we're in a good spot to cover it and to do it in a fashion that allows us to look at the budget and addendums, have discussion, work very collaboratively, collaboratively through the process. Um, and I think the big ask on FinCom is going to be um, December and January. Pray for no snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Delays are not going to be. Anyway, it helps the town in lots of ways to not have snow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. yeah. Very That's true. true. <laughs> Close on that one. Okay. Next yeah. topic on our agenda. Reorganization. Um, um, sorry. Yep. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Four zero. We're out. Thank you, gentlemen, ladies. The whole stay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so here we are, folks. You know, maybe we'll give a minute to. Yeah. How much, man? How you doing?
join the summer. Uh, Finally yeah, here. What are you doing for the fourth inning? We're off to uh, our annual trip to Hawaii. Oh, you are. Nice. How are you? Yeah, I knew that. This was a couple weeks. Can you give me a ride? That's awesome. So we. And where do you stay? Do you stay with her family, or do you stay? Uh, we have get our own place. So. We do. Very uh, important and busy coming year. <laughs> and what I think we need to do is talk about um, having a new leader come on board as, as chair, to vote for a new chair, vote for a new vice chair. And one of the first things that will come from that will be ladies on assignments. Um, so, is open. I think there are two things that need to happen. One is certainly we, we need to nominate people, but I think it'd be good to have a discussion from folks who um, do what's going to be needed this year, which is going to be a bit of a push. Um, but I think it's really it's important. This may be one of the more fulfilling years as an opportunity. So I, I kind of open the floor. I'll, I'll jump right in. I know I know Mark. You've stated, and this is not your aspiration to. to be the leader for you know your entire career. <laughs> um, Chairman for life. Yeah, exactly. W would you would you do another term given where we given where we are? I don't mean to put you in that spot, but you've done a phenomenal job so far, and you've been heavily <laughs> you've been heavily involved in it. There's certainly a benefit to the group having you stay in it. I understand that's also a pressure to you. So. My stance is before we go any further, w would you consider it? So I'm happy to help, but I think it may be a good time for another person to kind of step in here. Okay. Um, and I will assist. Yeah, I'm happy yeah. to do that uh, in a formal or informal role. Right. And I'll reverse that for Mark's sake. Would you be willing to take the chairman role? I unfortunately want to say the same thing. I've got a few things going on work wise that I want to be as involved as I can, but I don't think I can be more involved than I have been, given what I know I have coming to me in other areas over the next 12 months. Um, careful there, but... The folks that would be willing to step up to... Uh... How are you feeling, Ann? <laughs> I'm feeling... Pretty oh, at my max right now. I think being a new parent can do that. Oh. <laughs> Guys, I can't do that. <laughs> Maybe we stop being nice and I nominate Paula. Peter. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd be willing to vice, but I don't think I want to do chairman. But. Uh, <laughs> well, let's not go that Nobody far yet. Nobody wants to be true. <laughs> so hard to do this at an open meeting, isn't it? <laughs> I see a strong straw. I meant to get on the phone for it. <laughs> so, let's move down the line. Vanessa? No, thank you. <laughs> are, we on, are we on TV? We are. Yes. Sure. I would do I would do the vice role, but I can't. I, I'm I'm feeling like Paul. I I just don't think I would have the right level of commitment to do the chairman. Role. So <sighs> you're the only one left. I, I asked for a TV for a reason, so I'm, I'm just not certain of my situation. Upcoming. Have we ever done co-chair? Someone may have a little look at the charter and see if that's even allowed. Yeah, probably. Actually, we know that that's not okay. So there will be a chair and a vice chair, right? I mean, you can do chair and vice chair and divvy it up the way you want, I guess. Right. But formally. Well, he wants the chair, wants the vice chair. Anyone willing to consider being a unofficial co-chairs? 
there's merit to having one person kind of pulling things along and to have a second person there. I think that structure is correct. Yeah. I think that's actually important. And who would, who would, who would he invite to the meetings, right? Who would one or the other, right? How would you figure that out? So where are we, folks? I think we're stuck in the law over here. Nobody, nobody wants it. It looks like I think it looks like David. Town could do for you. <laughs> David, David, where's David? He just got voted in. Uh, That's exactly. <laughs> my, my, my vote is, is <laughs> well, when are we meeting next? August, September. September. Is that the beginning of the calendar? So do we meet? Uh, this this where you're yeah, going. yeah, I'm with you. Can, so we, can we? Yeah. yeah, or should we have another meeting? Even in July, yeah. there's some things that we talk about talking about. We never get to them because we're always so busy with the budget cycle. Um, like you know, one thing I would love to look at is reserve funds. Is there is there some algorithm as to the right amount to leave in? Because I feel like that really hurt the school committee budget last year to a tune of what over three hundred thousand dollars have to adjust those mm -hmm. so I think that could be a good I mean I feel like there's a few good discussions we could have as this income so if people were game for a summer meeting then maybe we can yeah. for those people that are meeting for those people that are on the fence would July give you time to consider That's what I'm also taking thinking. the chair role sort of having that extra Oops. weeks or month <laughs> yeah, right. But I suppose that would be okay. You know, it, it, it's an important year, I think. So being chair is a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> here's, so the here's the so pep talk. Yeah, I know. I got it so hard enough. <laughs> yeah, I survived. Yeah, there you go. Survived. Survived. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ready? Three Way to sell it. Wow. 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 Nice. Is it three? I was thinking it was two. Yeah. Three. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it sounded decisive. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, you remember. Three. Right. I just, I think it, as soon it, as possible. We want the, you know, the group. I think has really coalesced very nicely. I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. This past yeah. year was, was actually right, a right. really, really good year. I yeah. think we did a lot of stuff together. Um, and I think there were a lot of compromises that, that went on in different meetings, especially this last year, that resulted in things. Right. And Tom meeting agreed. And that's really our role. So I think that's all really good. Um, but we need to continue that. We need to have a strong bench. And we need to make this thing, you know, go. Um, and that's kind of the reason why I think it would be time for me to move on from the chair. You know, just for that reason. Um, and this is a great year, great opportunity. To jump into the deep end. Uh, Mark, I think something that might be helpful is um, your thoughts on the time commitment that it requires yeah. outside of the scheduled meetings, including you know the fact that we do have an accelerated 2018 and January or December January schedule. Um, so, what is the time commitment at home, putting together um, the discussion points, the presentations, um, you know, how much prep you do for these for our regular meetings? So I think that the prep for town meeting really is not bad. It, it's it's creating kind of something that you're going to write through. It's it's hours, not days. Um, and bouncing it off of other people, I think, has, has good merit. Um, I think the other activities, when there are special things going on in town, special uh, if there are executive sessions or other activities that take place, those are unpredictable. Um, when we Running the financial forums. Yeah. Technically, the FinCom. I mean, that's yeah. Challenge. yeah. It, I, I think it's more kind of um, meeting and organizing, and, and it, I don't know that it was a massive number of hours. I mean, you're, you're copying on, on everything that was going on. Yep. Um, it's more, and it's a, it's some organizational aspects. I think in, in trying to structure kind of how the, how we have an open debate, and I think assuring an open debate. Um, you know, how do I quantify that? You know, is, is it uh, I think the thinking 
time is where it is, much more so than the kind of, you know, wow, it's an extra four hours a week. It's not. And it's very uh, topical and time focused. So budget time is the heavy time. And a little bit of prep for town meeting. That's pretty much it. And Bob does a lot of, I mean, as chair, you do spend a, a, probably a little bit more time communicating with Bob, sort of understanding things, preparing. Um, you know, obviously, he comes to your meetings. And, um, so, I mean, it's, it, it, it's an opportunity. It really is. I mean, you know, we're, we're kind of at the core of how the town runs, right? We're, we're not doing the running, but we're, we're overseeing. We're see, we're Would you say there. Bob kind of guides the chairman and what needs to happen in terms of, like, the timeline and all that? Yes. I absolutely think so. I think Bob is, right. Does he often put together the agendas and stuff? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, the per meeting agendas. Um, yeah. Although this is like a phone call that says, you know, we've got to talk about this and, you know, we yeah, Exactly. You know. It, somebody wants to nominate me. <laughs> I nominate Peter. I will. <laughs> I said, decline. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Suggest we just talk about changes. Mm -hmm. it's somewhat easier. Okay. I have to pick up on it. Oh. You don't have to pick out pick up on it. No. No. Oh. Okay. I thought Mark right. was on audit. Okay. So we put two people on audit. It usually is the chair, but it doesn't have to. It could be the vice chair. Oh. <laughs> 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 So, I think David would be willing to be one of the audit people if we wanted to be, we usually have two. But does it really have to be a chair or a vice chair, or no, it could be two others? I think it traditionally has been, David but I don't is think it has on to it be. already, right? Oh, I'm right. Right. Well, I see, I'd should be happy to, to I'd be happy to stay on audit committee as well. I've done it. Oh, yeah, David already is, yeah. a while before. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that'd be great. Um, I'd stay, and then uh, well, have the I'll have two of you could be the other. I'm willing to do audit, so. Okay. All right, sir. Paul, uh, Peter. Peter and either David or David or. Uh, I'm here. I'll, I'm happy to. I'm happy to do it. Uh, I'll. Well, that's so. Mm -hmm. So the library building committee is finished, right? Is that there yeah, we go. Yeah. That was separate. I wasn't on the library building committee. Um, I was um, that was me and David. for the library trustees. Library building committee was separate. That was separate. That no, was Mark, and, Mark David. and David. David, yeah. Okay. And Paul. Yeah, it's okay. down here. Yeah. Oh, I see. So library and library trustees, schools and schools. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind being the liaison for the selectmen. I enjoy going to those meetings. 
That's great. Um, I'm very but, surprised. Uh, you probably don't want four things. No. I, I'd like to keep the library. Um, I think essentially we're all going to be liaisons for the school committee this year. Yep. So, um, and I, I didn't attend public services meetings, so whoever wants to take that one on, that'd be... They might benefit from having a presence. I'll take public services. And again, they'll call me, right? They usually it's, will. Once yeah, the liaisons yeah. come out, they, they all the department heads are. Well, I often emails. find the challenge on these is not being informed of what what the liaison next. Because I don't go looking for meetings. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what the, we should the do catch- is they find you. Reach out to the department head and just say, "Hi, I'm a liaison. Can you put me on your mailing list?" The catch with the public services is they have. A, there's a lot of different department meetings. Yeah, there's a lot of different. So, right. It's so it's trying to figure out the best. The one thing that I, I would recommend, um, because it's just a lot of new things going on and a lot of sort of pressure on, is all the services. Mm. A lot of just initiatives. You know, we're doing the we're doing the senior tax relief. That's got th- those applications are going to go in in, in August. Um, you know, and that'll be set by the selectmen in November. There was just a whole report came out through, um, uh, was it Tufts or? Oh, you, oh no, uh, right UMass. Elder services if I Jane. Jane Delius. Or oh, Jean, yeah, but then Jane also. Oh, Jane. Yeah, Jane Burns. Yeah. She's the elder services person. At least you'll get, like, things about what's going on there. Mm-hmm. I just, th- there's a lot going on there and a lot that we need to figure out. There's a booming right. older population. I think we were supposed to include the liaisons um, on the, you know, all the agendas and stuff. So if you're not getting put on it, it's it's maybe an admin missing that this is the liaison that has changed mm-hmm. and needs to be. You know what I mean? So that might be kind of the, the issue. Um, so knowing that, I'll mention it to Bob and we'll discuss it. Right, because even the permanent meeting. building committee, I was. We weren't really, getting anything. I, I wasn't, and then I was, and I was at each of the meetings and yeah. then gone. What are you going to take on? Um, I was considering RMLD. It's, uh, I enjoyed going to those meetings, so, but I was going to step off of that. So. <laughs> You were going to step off. Yeah. So I could pick that yeah. up. Yep. <laughs> Are there any that we're not covering? So, Paul, you're going to stay with the PBC. Sure. I'm on that, too. So David looks like can pick up something else. All right. Because library building committee is going to be gone. He's not on audit. He's not getting audit anymore. So we can act, maybe we can get something. We've got selectmen schools pretty well covered. So I think you should have two on public safety. Is there just one? Yeah, I've got public safety. Um, or does that have to be the chair? It can be anybody, I think. It can be so we've okay. actually got one, two, three, four, four people that are supposed to be selectmen. I think the advantage of that was is they meet so frequently, it's mm-hmm. a way to mm-hmm. kind of split that work a little bit. Okay. But it could be three people more than four, that's fine. And did Vanessa just added herself to that, right? That's fine. So I'm happy to step off. How's that? So one, two. <laughs> we don't want to get a four. So. <laughs> one, two. There's four. People. Actually, we're okay at four. Right. We're a nine person to get, so. Yeah. I enjoy the library meetings, but if someone needs an extra one, I can step off of that one since I have schools and selectmen. Should we ask David to change from the building committee to the more formal library board of trustees? Yeah, that seems like a good Do you think, Paula, you need two on PBC or is one enough? Um, Eric, sorry. I'm on it. Oh, I'm sorry. So the answer would be two. Can I make a suggestion? I, I, I didn't. Is there someone on public safety? Yes. yes. They don't necessarily meet. There's no. Right. 
meetings, but you know, given sort of the, the discussion that we heard on manpower, people power, overtime, it's probably good to um, have a discussion with the chiefs just to sort of you know informally understand. Um, I, I was actually I did the. the beginning of this last term, which I found very helpful, and if I take public safety again, I'd re-engage them. Yeah, especially kind of to understand, you know, what their challenges are um, and and what they're, you know, what, what they really need. I think it's, it'll be helpful. I'd be happy to join you now. Uh, David is in need of another home. <coughs> Was he getting the library? Has he been trustees? given the library? Um, yeah. What about finance? Not that he already uh, has finance. <laughs> oh, is he? Okay. He's yeah. on finance. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and library now. I was unaware of any meeting in finance last year. So. There's no meeting. Yeah. It's just if something's <laughs> going on. Not a big burden. <laughs> We're too busy to hold meetings. <laughs> Where else could you use another thing? I think David uh, could definitely use another piece. Guys, I'm going to sneak out. I'm going to get picked up. So, congratulations, Peter. Thank you. <laughs> um, I actually found the pension meeting to be uh, informative. And the retirement board, yeah. yeah. Um, we never have the guests, so it is something that... I know. Yeah. Everybody's shocked. They didn't they're know. Like, oh, God, is it? Oh, <laughs> nobody um, comes unless they're like there for a hearing, a disability hearing or something. I think that'd be a good one for, for David. Yeah. Retirement board? Um, yeah. Yeah. His, his yeah the library's not a heavy lift, so... Yeah. So I'm going to do that. That's great. Idea. And they only meet once a, once a um, month, so... I'll actually think of myself on that too, and David and I can uh, okay. work out coverage. Eric, how's facilities been? Is that going to get kind of heavier, or do you think that's. I haven't seen any indication of that. I've met with Jeff a couple times over the course of the year. I don't have a line of sight on anything that's going to require more time. So, is Jeff, is it Jeff Zager? Mm -hmm. Or Joe Huggins? Joe, Joe Huggins. I think he's just got a people coming. I met with Jeff. You met yeah. with Jeff oh, Zager? Yeah, yeah, I did. So we don't actually have DPW here. Yeah, that's what we do. Sorry, Mark, you got it. Sorry. Yeah, You're I was going to say, yeah, public okay. Services. I don't know if they've ever had a liaison. Because it's kind of administrative services. Oh, right? administrative. I, yeah. I heard ministry of <laughs> services. It is. It's administrative <laughs> services. It's administrative, administrative services. <laughs> They're not actually on here, but. That's a good idea, too. So that includes ombudsman. It's kind of it, it's the ombudsman, technology, um, the town clerk, the town manager's office, and FinCom all falls under administrative services. David. What do you guess for not being here? Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Eagerly take that. Uh -huh. That's a good one. Because the technology is an interesting piece because, you, you know, we, we never have the right money to be efficient with the technology. <laughs> yeah. Who's taking that one? David. David? Okay. So we have him on library retirement and admin, admin services. We're sort of taking we can leave them alone now. <laughs> now that you've added, you should go read them. Cool. Any other requests? Changes? No. All right, do we have any other business? Just thinking, perhaps talking about, and maybe there's no algorithm. I mean, yeah. You wanted to. I know you're help. helpful, right? Coming up with helping them, coming up with the right amount that the revolving fund should maintain, right? Oh yes. <coughs> I thought you were talking about reserves, like. <coughs> I wasn't, but that's another. Yeah. One. Yeah. I think it might be nice to have a meeting. I mean, I know some people might be patient, but. 
It might be nice to have a meeting in July where we don't have a town meeting or a budget or mm -hmm. something sort of breathing down our necks where we can discuss perhaps more philosophical things. It I doesn't have to go to 11 o'clock. I want to turn into dictator, but I can't make the 12th or the 19th, so <laughs> <laughs> up to the, well, either the 5th, which is obviously too soon, or the You 26th. guys normally a Wednesday night meeting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, the 26th would work for me if we want to do that. in the 26th, 7.30. And it'll be uh, very much open agenda, so anybody who wants to put any items on the agenda, suggest them to me or to Bob, that would be great. Now one thing that you do need to do is you need to, um, you have to be posted at least 48 business hours ahead <laughs> with the agenda. You have so to you have the agenda. Have a, a, yeah. No agenda items, then come in with the agenda items. It's got to get posted. Mm -hmm. Don't run what the agenda items are, at least 48, more than 48 hours. Ahead. How do yep. the yep. rooms bookings work? How do the rooms bookings work? Not that I imagine there's big demand in July, but who does that? This is kind of where we are, and it's... Yeah, we have, like, a built. calendar okay. with all the conference rooms. So, like, if you guys told me you want this room for that July 26th meeting, I could, like, go in and put it in now. I'm assuming nobody would have taken it. Mm-hmm. And if it's not available, we'll sure reject and put you yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, worst case, we could try to shuffle meetings around if we needed to. If it's already booked, it will. You can look for that. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Should we talk about what people might want to see on the agenda? Let's start with that. We can do that now, and uh, I'll take other items later. But if, yeah, so if you wanted just a general discussion of reserve practices. And yeah. I mean, one of the things with the uh, school committee and the reserves was they had uh, adjusted them the year before, and then they had to come back and follow up. Right, a little they did it as a short-term fix. It would be nice yeah. if we could always go back to, well, gee, we should be looking at this algorithm or whatever to say, no. It's not an algorithm. It's, it's basically that they're trying to match the cost with the revenue. Um, and so they're, they're estimating enrollment, like, let's say, for, like, the preschool, the rise preschool, and they're trying to figure out how to, what's the right tuition for that to make it match up with what it cost us to run the program. So it's, um, there's a little bit of an estimate that goes on there and um, they have to be somewhat conservative just because they want to make sure that they have yeah. enough revenue coming in to support the program. So it's really not all that involved in terms of if they kind of have a feel for what enrollment is, we can kind of get to what the number has to be. Um, and are we overcharging and, and that. The problem we've had is an adjustment with the support because wages, sometimes the support that's coming in for the general fund is um, it's covering you know, custodians, let's say, for extended day and things of that nature, and those things go up. And so making sure it goes up appropriately for what the wages really are, and that's the sort of thing that we're adjusting each year. Um, so there's not a whole lot of work that has to get done. The big issue that we have with revolving funds was that for some reason the school would budget appropriately for their support years ago. And then as the end of the year would come and I would be doing the entry to move the support, they wouldn't need it and they wouldn't take it. And they built money in revolving funds that are very much dedicated for those programs. Um, and you can't take them out. <laughs> after, after it's in there, it's in there. And now you've got to use it for that program. Um, and we did get a management letter comment on it, and we've been working to try and reduce those revolving funds. So that's challenging because you have to find one-time items to try and get money out that benefit, let's say, full-day kindergarten or the RISE preschool program or whatever the case might be. So it's not something that gets fixed overnight. It's definitely something that you know it's, it requires a lot of thought process about what can we do to enrich this program to bring, bring these revolving fund balances down to right is they had, you know, in some cases, a year's worth of revenue sitting in there or more. Um, and, and we're in the right direction because all of them have gone down except for one, which was the extended day. Um, and that was the one that was most in question, largely because um, 
they didn't have enough staff is what we could tell from when we were looking at it. And they hired new staff. They hired a lot of staff to do the administrative end because the director of the program was spending a lot of time actually just processing the payments coming in for extended day and not the time that she should be spending enriching that extended day program. Um, and so there was a need to add staff, so it was really hard to, to gauge what should it really be. This year, they reduced the tuition um, for extended day um, by 10% because we realized after all was said and done, once all those people were added that needed to be added to process the payments and the billings and stuff like that, um, that we still were growing, the, the, the balance was growing. So there was a mismatch still there, but we have corrected and, and hopefully we'll start to see it come down. So it's constantly being on our radar because it is a cause for concern. But also, too, now that we've had a management letter comment, um, the, the law regarding these revolving funds is very vague. It doesn't say you can't go over X amount of dollars in the fund, or it doesn't give you guidance that says you can't do this. Um, so it's all very kind of subject to interpretation. Um, and so from the very day I started, I disagreed with the school and the way they were handling it. But I didn't have anything in black and white to say that. When we got the management letter comment, now it said, the auditors disagree with you. And so now we're all on the same page, that we are doing it. Whatever you budgeted for support is coming out, unless you don't have the money in the fund. Um, yeah, so that's a kind of